The congressionally mandated national climate assessment was released on Friday. The report details the extreme dangers of climate change and the toll that human activity has played in speeding up the process. Joining us now from Washington is co-author of the 2018 National Assessment and Distinguished Fellow at the World Resources Institute, Andrew Light. So, Andrew, let's start with the big picture. What are really the main takeaways from this report? Uh, the main takeaway is that climate change is already affecting every part of the United States, region by region, and just about all parts of the economy. And that as we move forward, if we don't aggressively move towards reducing um, the production of greenhouse gases, then we are going to see worse and worse impacts by the end of the century. So according to the report, can you say that humans are really directly responsible for climate change? Yes, absolutely. Authoritatively, there is absolutely no doubt that humans are the ones that are causing climate change. We're seeing spikes in the production of greenhouse gases that are leading to temperature increases that we have not seen for hundreds of thousands of years at this point. The report details some of the effects that climate change has already had on the U.S. economy. What exactly did you find? Well, it's, it's, it, we, what we did is to look at, first of all, one half of it is on what's going on right now. We're seeing increase in threats to infrastructure. Um, we're seeing things like you know, $200 billion uh, uh, bills for extreme weather events over the past several years. And as you move forward in time, the difference between a scenario where we get a handle on climate change and one where we don't is one where you can avoid hundreds of billions of dollars of impact to the U.S. economy and save tens of thousands of lives per year by the time you get to 2090. So the difference between a high emission scenario um, where we don't um, try to control the problem with other partners around the world and one where we try to achieve our internationally accepted targets, for example, under the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, is pretty stark. So what would you say when you look at the industries that are really being impacted the most by the increased frequency of extreme weather, what would those be? Well, coastal infrastru infrastructure, uh, private property on the coast, that's about a trillion dollars in assets that are threatened right now by climate change. We're already seeing uh, impacts to the agricultural sector and projected spikes in temperature, especially in the Midwest, you know, the, the breadbasket of the United States and the impacts that could happen there. You're seeing impacts in the tourism economy, um, you, you know, ski resorts, things like this. And you're also seeing um, dil dilatory effects on the healthcare system, stresses to the healthcare system because of increased in diseases that are driven in part by climate change. When you mention the health care system, when you look at people's well-being and their own personal health of the American people, what dangers could we face with these shifting climate changes? The health coach chapter is, is excellent, um, and it goes through and demonstrates step by step how we'll, we're already seeing increases in foodborne, waterborne, and vector diseases because of increases in temperature and the spread of um, insects and other things that cause diseases. And then again, as you move out into the future, unless we begin to lower emissions, then you're going to see more of that. You know, the Trump administration dismissed the report as saying it's solely based on really extreme climate change scenarios. Is that true? No, it's not true. Not at all. First of all, again, half the report is just observations of what's happening right now in the United States. And we know that we're seeing impacts now that are dilatorious to the economy and are hurting Americans. Um, you look at um, you know, moving out to the future, you've got an administration that has already said that they want to pull back on their contribution to reducing global emissions. If that begins to spread to other countries, if we see an impact where other countries don't want to step up their efforts because the United States is pulling back, then we are gonna see these higher temperature scenarios, which is gonna hurt even more Americans. Finally, what, what action can we take to really slow this rapid increase of climate change around the world? Is it too late? It's not too late. And in fact, the, the, the report is quite hopeful in that respect. On the one hand, there are adaptation efforts. And so you've already got, and the report illustrates this, all around America, you've got lots of efforts to try to adapt to increased sea level rise, um, uh, increased uh, heat waves in cities, uh, more stresses on crops. What we need, though, is we need more of that. We need national leadership to make sure that those kinds of efforts happen everywhere. And while the report doesn't offer policy prescriptions on what we need to do to stop increasing temperatures by um, producing greenhouse gases, the implications of the report are absolutely clear. Um, that we need to move forward aggressively with more efforts to switch to clean energy to stop producing the pollution that's causing climate change. We don't, aren't seeing that at the national level right now, but we are seeing that leadership from governors, from mayors, from business leaders who all together are still trying to move the United States forward to cooperate with other countries to reduce emissions, which are, under, which are the underlying cause of the problem. Andrew Light, thank you for joining us. Thank you.